but now it's time to make some changes. There are some areas like this polygon strip right here where we can really collapse that down and it won't impact our deformation or, the, uh, or too much of the overall topology. So what I can do is I can go over here to my collapse tool and I can start collapsing these. So that saves us going down vertically, but when we're going uh, down the length of the model, we can also collapse some of the, some of the uh, polygon strips this direction as well. As this becomes narrower, the polygons here are going to start getting closer and closer together. As you can see up here, these are pretty nice uh, square-ish polygons, but down here it starts to become very uh, stretched. So what we can do to help mitigate this and also reduce our triangle count is we can reduce, is that we can collapse these edges. And we'll do this a couple times as we approach the end of the tail. I'm going to try and move some of the edges here so that we can try and capture as much of the, uh, the bumpiness here as possible without adding additional triangles. Now when we're drawing something along the, uh, the tail like this, one really cool feature about the strokes tool we can use is that if we switch to orthographic view, the 5 key, and then if we switch to the side view, the 4 key, we can actually draw a straight line all the way through the mesh, which will create an orange stroke as opposed to a green one, and an orange stroke means a completed edge loop. But we can make one that goes all the way through the mesh, and that'll also be perfectly straight. And then we'll also need to put in all the, uh, the points that would bridge this middle section right here. So an important thing to remember about that is that when we're placing these points, I'm going to do so with the points and faces tool, is that when you're doing that, I want to put the, uh, the point just slightly to the other side of the symmetry plane. And then when we bridge them, you'll see that 3D Coat automatically stops the vertices from going over to the other side, no matter how far over you drag them. So if we put our points just slightly onto the right side of the creature, or our left in this case, then we'll be able to create a seamless edge along the symmetry plane. I'll use my brush tool now in order to try and get uh, these polygons a little bit more evenly spaced because the ones on the very top and the very bottom are a little thin. Okay, I'm not going to worry about the tip of the tail just yet because now I'm going to focus on the fin. So I'm going to make another new retopology group. I'll call this one fin. And while I'm here, I'll rename this one main body. I'll hide the main body and the main body retopo group. And then I'll also hide the back plates and unhide the first fin. Now I know looking at the main body that we only need to worry about polygons from this point forward. We don't actually need to cover this area back here. So now with fin active, 
probably start out with my points and faces tool. Now you see here how we can see one of the vertices on the other side. You gotta be careful so that it doesn't, it'll try to uh, automatically connect to that. You have to make sure it doesn't. All right, that finishes off with the fins. So now if I bring back the main body, let's just finish off the tail here, and then we can move on to applying symmetry and then adjusting some of the uh, polygons on the other side that need that do not line up with the high resolution mesh. So let's... There we go.